Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So, <laughs> April 1st, 2024, global protest, another one. Yes, they work. And, you know, I, I know I'm sure a lot of you are, are getting tired of hearing them. Uh, but for those of for those of you that are, you know, that, that get it, you know, you got to keep doing it. You can't just do one and hope something's going to change. You got to keep hitting these companies where it matters in the pocketbook. But with that being said, I want to share something that Jeff over at um, the Mike Drop Barbecue on YouTube said I could share with him. And this is a really great piece of information. I don't know the lady's name who actually went through and, 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 and uh, this was biblical, <laughs> but I want to give her a shout out too, because she's got, she went and dug through all the, the blanket of bullshit that Lyft and Uber put out to find this in the contractual agreement between rideshare drivers and these companies. And I want you to check it out. Here it is. A lot of drivers don't take time to read into those service terms and conditions, right? Let me share with you. As a driver of the platform, you acknowledge and agree that you are in a direct business relationship. And the relationship between the parties under this agreement is solely that of an independent contracting party. Independent you contractor. And the platform expressingly agree that this is not an employment agreement and does not create an employment relationship between you and the platform. Amen. Right there. Y'all heard it first. Right. This now, is in their right. service terms and agreement. Yeah. She, read, she read the Bible to your ass. <laughs> so there you have it. And you're damn right. And I agree. I agree with Jeff. She 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 preached it in biblical proportions. We are independent contractors, even under their own terms of service. But when they do crap, like well, let's go to the next thing real quick. Right here. In California, and I'm sure in other states too, I got this from an attorney's page. Uh, independent contractors have the right to choose their clients and the projects they work on, meaning we can pick and choose who we want to pick up and where we want to go, whether we want to do it or not. And we have the freedom to negotiate our terms, which means the, with these protests, we can actually, we have the right to negotiate with Lyft to say, we want more per mile and more per minute. We also have the freedom to set our own rates and determine our work schedules. That's the only thing that keeps us independent right now, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we can sign on and sign off whenever we want. That's the loophole. That's the gray area under the blanket of bullshit that, that allows us to be independent contractors. Yet in their in their own terms of service and community guidelines and contractual agreements, you heard what the what the lady said. We are independent contractors. But when you see stuff like this, this passenger is paying $100 to go to um, 8th and Alvarado, yet they're paying the driver $48. So Lyft is taking 52% of this right off the top, 52, 52%, $52. That leaves 48%. So the driver, like David Risher said, is getting 70% of 48%. That's that again, that's a blanket of bullshit. It's smoke and mirrors. Drivers are not making any more money now than they did before he came up with that BS crap about how we're going to he's going to guarantee us 70 percent. So we said, look, here's what we can do. What we can do is commit to a mm -hmm. floor of 70 percent after the fee. And I want to say one more thing there. The vast majority of our drivers earn about 86, 87 percent. Bullshit. Because what he's doing now is incorporating your surge into part of the passenger pay, which it's never been. Okay. And then I want to show you another ride right here. This one. Um, and this is a good one because it shows uh, eight, uh, the passenger pay 1381 and the lift took out 522 and $1.59. So that's what? Uh, six, uh, 70, wait, 681, 
681. Yeah, 59, 69. 681. Earnings were seven dollars. But the base pay on this trip was two dollars and fifty cents. And then I there was a bonus of uh, four dollars and fifty cents, which was a surge. So technically, out of thirteen eighty one, without the bonus, that pay the lift would have paid the driver the minimum base earnings of two dollars and fifty cents, which means they would have pocketed eleven dollars and thirty one cents. Okay. Eleven dollars and thirty one cents is what they would have kept because the minimum fare for that ride is two dollars and fifty cents. And their breakdown here now is so muddled and and, and and cobwebbed up that you can't even see it anymore. There is no more transparency because if that surge wasn't there, the estimated external fees and the lift uh, ex estimated lift fees would have been higher because the minimum fare for a trip that is 1.6 miles is $2.50 no matter how you look at it. So what Lyft is doing at this rate is they're they're manipulating what the passenger pays versus what base rates are and all that other stuff and they are literally taking everything else. And you saw in the last two trips they're taking in excess of 50% right off the top. So do you want to know why the protests mean so much? This is why. Do you want to know why we do things we do and push push these protests and stuff against these companies on our YouTube channels? This is why. This is why I get involved with the Rideshare Professor. This is why I get involved with Jeff over at the Mike Drop Barbecue. This is why we all get involved to put the on our channels to put these out. So drivers and passengers as well know exactly what we're standing for. Okay. We have a right. To, we have a right to make a decent amount of money. We have a right to make minimum wage, whether, you know, we're on, if we're online waiting for calls, we're online, we're on a clock. So we should be getting paid for that. That's the bottom line. Agree, disagree. It's fine. April 1st. We are not fools. We play by our rules. And as long as we keep our keep plugging away and punching and shoving and kicking these companies and, and, and doing these protests and taking money out of their pockets, then eventually they're going to have to do something. Fair ride share is right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. Fair ride share. Um, I'll put uh, at the end of this video, I will... Um, I'll put a uh, a QR code if you want to if you're looking to become a driver. Um, it is a uh, it's it, it's awesome, and uh, you sign up as a driver, sign up as a passenger, sign up as both. It doesn't matter. And um, the more drivers we start onboarding, the more likely the, the sooner we'll get to your town. They're already in Canada. So April first, we're not fools. We play by our by our own rules. We are independent contractors and by law we have the right to set our own rates and tell these companies that what they're paying us isn't enough and they can shove it up their ass so until next time be safe be professional keep it real if you must drive on until then i truly wish you all the very best of health we got to keep fighting the hell with these companies